favorite toy, apparently. Let's see what it is. The potato! <laughs> it smells like kitchen. Kitchen Christmas. <laughs> it smells like Christmas in the kitchen. It smells like kitchen in the Christmas. <laughs> it does really. Oh my god, it's lovely. I was so excited about the smell of this that I forgot how to talk. So, Hey guys, so I just got off work and um, I've really been trying to stay more consistent with my YouTube videos, so please forgive me. Um, but I'm always looking to share content, um, new content on things that I've learned, um, ways my health has improved, um, or things that I notice in uh, my own body um, since adopting a low fat plant based diet. So, Basically, you guys, um, I started this diet basically trying to clear my skin. So I healed stage four endometriosis, um, some precancerous conditions as well, um, and cyst-like tumors, things. I healed that actually um, initially by parasite detoxing and also by changing my diet to a whole food plant-based diet. Initially, my health just totally and utterly improved. Um, and so that, uh, I had been eating that way, um, not really caring much about like how much fat that I was eating. Um, I'd eaten that way for maybe a year and a half. And I, I felt really, really good. And, um, and basically, um, as I got more comfortable with the lifestyle, I started eating uh, more fats, um, a lot more of those, um, you know, avocado dishes and um, nut cheese sauces and everything. Uh, maybe not everything, but definitely more um, more than the longest living populations, I'll say that. So I started really looking into the longest living populations and that's kind of when um, things changed for me because I started to realize they ate a really naturally low fat diet. Um, their diet was very um, much centered in starches and non-starchy veggies. Um, they didn't eat um, nut butters consistently and they didn't eat um, you know, um, avocados and coconut, um, milk and curries and, and all of that. Like they, they, um, eat a pretty low, um, low fat diet. When I say low fat, um, they can include those things, but, um, they don't focus on those things. So I would say their fat consumption, uh, probably rounds out at about 10 to 12% or so or less, um, but definitely no more than that. And so, um, I noticed that as I started getting, um, or eating more fats, transitioning kind of into this whole new, like plant lifestyle, um, I started getting some acne. And at first I was really confused because I was like, what's going on? You know, like I'm doing everything right. Um, for the first time in my life eating healthy, I didn't even have acne when I did eat unhealthy. And so here I am like over preparing, you know, making sure that um, that my food is strictly whole food, plant-based. Um, I was eating a little more oil when I'd go out because of um, just the convenience factor, but I didn't cook with oil at home. 
So um, that being said, um, I started to experience some acne and I also started to see a little bit of like, just a tad bit of weight gain. Um, definitely um, noticeable, but not so much that other people would notice. So um, that's when I came across um, Nina and Randa Nelson. Um, they followed Dr. John McDougall's um, acne protocol um, and basically found that just like me, they were eating a overall healthy diet, um, an overall vegan, um, you know, plant centered diet, but they were eating a lot of uh, fat, a lot of like peanut butter and soy milk and soy in general, which is super high in fat compared to other protein alternatives. Um, and so I love, you know, having clear skin. Um, some of the cystic acne I was getting was really painful and uncomfortable and uh, just super noticeable. Um, and I feel like, um, I felt like when I was in social settings, like, you know, I'm supposed to be healthy. Like I'm on this healthy diet and I'm the only one here that has acne, you know, something's wrong here. Um, and so that's when I started eating, um, a low fat plant-based diet. And let me tell you, um, I'm solely speaking from experience and, um, trial and error, but, um, a hundred percent the fats, the high fat percentage that I was eating or consuming was directly responsible um, for my skin health. And later I learned from learning about insulin resistance and how they've actually done studies. Um, sorry, my hair is all crazy. Um, they actually did studies um, showing that um, acne, especially severe acne, um, is an insulin resistant condition. the whole uh, concept um, is having excess lipids in your muscle tissue cells. So it's basically um, when you overeat fat and that fat um, is accumulatively stored in your cells, um, it bas basically plugging or clogging the cell. The insulin is then not able to carry sugar into the cell, which spikes your insulin, which also spikes your hormones. Um, which um, when your hormones spike, everyone knows that that's when you're, um, you can overproduce sebum. That's typically why teenagers have um, more acne prone skin. Um, and also um, when we overconsume our omega sixes and nines, um, that pretty much takes you into a pro-inflammatory condition. So not only do you have excess sebum being produced um, in the sebaceous glands, but now you have inflammation. Um, and so that's basically where acne erupts. And so I figured it out. I put the puzzle pieces together and figured out that the longest living populations um, typically don't have um, acne, uh, but especially in certain places. Um, in Papua New Guinea um, and an island, uh, Catawba, they did a research study and found that specifically these places had no occurrence of acne and almost no occurrence of um, heart disease, cancer, and other chronic leading Western diseases as well. That really plugged my interest, and since then I've been eating a low-fat plant-based diet. So, um, I learned when uh, I was putting on a little weight, I learned about calorie density. 
and I never understood the concept. I always knew that if you lost weight, it meant that you had to cut your calories, that you basically had to starve yourself. And that's basically what I grew up believing. And now living in a culture where everybody is weight conscious, um, I see a lot of misconceptions. And so basically, um, calorie density is filling up on uh, foods that are, are, are best, basically more calorically dilute. So I'm going to post a, sh a chart to show you guys what I'm talking about here. But I want to first mention that I eat a lot of food and I still maintain about 125 pounds. I haven't put on weight. Um, I can lose weight. Um, and basically, as long as you eat this way, you will continue um, losing weight until you feel um, like you're done losing weight. And then at that moment in time, you can um, add more calorically dense foods back in. Um, but basically... This all revolves around jo uh, Dr. John McDougall um, and his uh, what he found. Um, basically, the the most indigenous populations all eat this way, and they always have um, very very plant centered. Um, so it's low fat, um, and basically, I fill up my plate um, with always always at least maybe not quite a half of my plate, but most of my plate is um, non-starchy veggies. Um, and basically what you do is when you fill up on those foods first, um, fiber naturally fills the stomach more than um, more calorie dense foods. So fiber, although it's calorically dilute, um, you actually will fill up on these foods faster. So you're kind of like tricking the stomach and the brain. So you fill up on these foods, um, and then you also, on the other side of your plate, you still have your starches and your legumes and your other foods as well. Um, but really and truly, when it comes to weight loss, you really, really have to eat your veggies um, and your fruits. So um, veggies are about um, 100 calories per pound, non-starchy veggies. Um, and then you have fruit, um, which is next in line to being more calorically dilute. Um, then you have your potatoes, your oats, um, your squash, your corn, um, and then you have your legumes, um, which are about 600 calories per pound. Um, and then from that point on, your avocados are roughly 750 calories uh, per pound. And then you move on up to nuts and seeds, which are about 2,500 calories per pound. And then your most calorically dense food, or non-food rather, would be your oils, which is roughly um, 4,000 calories per pound. So if you you can see the drastic difference in, um, in basically how you can lose weight simply by eating um, more of those foods on the lesser end of the, the chart, basically. So um, I eat a lot of veggies. Um, and believe it or not... Um, the frozen veggies um, section is my, uh, I don't know. I feel like frozen veggies deserve an award. You don't, they're just so convenient. Um, and so uh, I'll show you um, what I end up eating in just a little bit. Um, but I say all this to say that um, potatoes have a really bad rap for being um, um, bad weight loss food and I just want to reiterate um, how important it is um, to take into account all of the food. So for instance, a potato alone is only about one calorie per gram, if I said that right. Yeah, so it's it's really um, not a, a rich food. It's not a food that um, you necessarily have to cut out. It's actually a really good food, a really good healthy food full of nutrients um, by itself. But when you add in more calorically dense foods like sour cream and butter and bacon and cheese, um, and typically there's not very much green in that, there's not much um, uh, 
many other good things that can go on top of that. It's usually really, really high fat food. So then that complex carb that's naturally healthy is then very, very easily converted into actually um, a, a fatty food. So at that point, it wouldn't even be um, a, a largely complex carbohydrate. Um, at that point, you're eating so much, much fat that it's actually becoming a... a, a a food that is very rich in saturated fats. And the same thing with um, French fries. The potato alone is fine, but when you fry them and soak up all the pro-inflammatory greases and free radicals, um, it becomes an unhealthy food. And so basically it's sticking to whole foods um, or minimally processed. So very close, um, you know, to the whole food. Um, you know, it's talk, it's, it's cornmeal, you know, compared to corn, high fructose corn syrup. There's a very broad difference. The caloric um, density is just totally on opposite ends of the spectrum. So, um, so potatoes are not a bad food. So, I was, I was right. A gram of fat has nine calories for every gram that you consume. Um, but a gram of a potato actually only has one calorie per gram. So, it basically has a lot more fiber, um, which means you can eat a lot of mashed potatoes or whatever kind of potato minus all the, all the bad and actually not be consuming many calories at all. So it's really fully dependent on what you put on this potato that uh, becomes like a game changer. So basically that's how I eat. I eat a lot of, um, and I'll actually go over some um, ideas. And um, this is from the clear skin diet. Um, and this is actually for people who have really, really severe acne. So I want to show you guys, um, what diet can do. Um, I actually, am uh, found these girls actually by doing this diet. Um, and now, um, basically coach, um, with their program. So I don't know if you can see the before and after, um, but there are some serious, this is actually Nina and Randa. Um, they are the uh, authors of this book. So this is kind of what my skin started to do. My skin just started to get more um, textured. I started getting uh, several cystic bumps on my face at a time and it just got uh, worse. I don't know if you can see this. Huge, huge difference. So now I encourage and coach people to take their skin back and to, um, you know, to get down to the weight that they want to be at. And pretty much in eating this way, all the other health issues that you have really and truly start to disappear. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, so for instance, um, it's things like eating oats, um, overnight oats, um, you know, lots of fruit, um, and don't be afraid to use cinnamon and dates and bananas and that sort of thing. Um, you're eating a lot of, um, sweet potatoes, um, a lot of rice. Um, you can actually make sweet potato pancakes, um, you're eating a lot of, um, did I say potatoes? You're eating a lot of potatoes, which is actually one of the common uh, foods of most of the indigenous populations. Um, in 1946, Okinawans, who are now one of the blue zones in the world, one of the longest living um, populations on earth, um, solely ate Japanese purple sweet potatoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for nearly 50 years. Um, and they actually still, um, many of the centenarians are still alive to talk about it today. It's pretty awesome. Um, and so, you know, you can do like a, a breakfast uh, potato hash. You're eating, you know, seasoned with garlic and onion and rosemary and salt and pepper and nutritional yeast. And you can still use your ketchups. And like I said, this is just a very low fat diet. It's whole foods um, in the sense that, um, that you know the ingredients and the label. And um, the, the center of your meal is real whole food. 
I still use sauces and condiments and hot sauce that probably aren't quote unquote healthy. Um, but man, that's how you, you season your food with plants. You really do. If you think about it, your barbecue sauces and, um, you know, your mustard and like, uh, you know, there's just so many different like your teriyaki sauces, like all of that, um, really is truly, um, derived from plants. So, um, that's how I, I see it. Um, but you can still have muffins and, um, you can have, um, uh, different like scrambles and stir fries and, uh, oh my gosh, you can make chickpea salad sandwiches. You can have lasagna, you can have chili, um, you can still have cornbread, you can have carrot dogs, you can have uh, black bean, you know, southwestern mac and cheese. Like you you can still eat all of those good, good foods with the really good taste. Does it require preparation? Yes. Uh, I would be lying to you if I said otherwise. Does it require, um, you know, extra time in your day and, um, and thinking um, for trips and, you know, traveling and, you know, picnics and everything? It really does change your life. But oh my gosh, if more people knew that they could totally eradicate their cystic and severe acne, their um, very, very painful chronic diseases eating this way, I'm telling you, it becomes far, the benefits far outweigh the inconveniences. So, um, so anyway, in eating this way, not only can you reverse a lot and most of your health conditions, especially the ones that are foodborne um, here in America, um, but you can also naturally lose weight without even trying, um, simply by just eating real whole foods and preferably on the less calorically dense side. And if you do have, um, um, you know, severe cystic acne, it becomes a little more strict. And if you do have more issues in certain, um, arenas, it does become, you know, more strict, but, um, but it's so worth it. You maintain your weight. It's nothing you even have to think about. There's no calorie counting. It's none of that. It's literally just eating predominantly whole plant foods and really, um, like I said, if you want to maximize that, you really, um, just kind of have half of your plate as non-starchy veggies, whether that's asparagus or broccoli or spinach, sauteed spinach or, um, oh my gosh, the list goes on. Brussels sprouts. You can do a huge salad on the side. Dressing, you do have to play with. But again, it's a learning curve. And if you're willing to make the changes, it can totally change your life. So that's all I have to say uh, for now. Uh, I will kind of show you what I'm having for lunch. It's pretty simple. I like so, simple. I know it's kind of hard to see me because of this light that we've tried to change. Something's got to give. I don't know. We may get a, a new light. I don't know. But for now, you can't see me that good. It's okay. It's okay. I have mixed some broccoli slaw and carrots in this bowl. I literally just turned on the heat to my pan. And just kind of throwing some of this in here. I love already chopped veggies. It's my favorite thing. Then I have here some already chopped Brussels sprouts. I'm just gonna throw it all in there because it's gonna go bad if I don't. And I'm always eating leftovers. And next, I actually chopped this pre-shredded cabbage. And I'm just gonna throw some handfuls in there. I'm just breaking it up as I go. And I'm going to season the ever-loving heck out of this. I will show you basically what I use. But I'm basically, I don't know if you can see how many veggies this is, but I'm, I'm about to show you. I'm about to show you. Wow, this is a lot. <laughs> but honestly, I'll probably eat most of this. I love veggies now. I used to hate vegetables. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm going to show you. So I'm gonna put some other stuff in here. And I'm gonna, this is a lentil uh, chili and I'm just gonna put this, I'm gonna eat it on top of that. If you are trying to lose weight 
You don't want to use oil. And I don't know how much more like clearer that needs to be made, but oil, one pound of oil is 4,000 calories. I mean, that's so much compared to other foods. So I typically use water or vegetable broth to saute in. I absolutely love vegetable broth. Love it. Okay, so that's that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna grab some other. Okay, so I'm gonna use some Bragg's as well. I do want to say this can be a trigger for acne for some people. Um, I did have some issues when I first started using this. Um, so if your issue is acne, you may not want to use this as much, but you uh, there's other alternatives. There's coconut aminos, so on, so forth. So I'm gonna actually stir that up pretty good. And this, that little bit of vegetable broth and soy, um, or excuse me, liquid aminos, adds a lot of flavor to this. And then for, with that base, I'm gonna, you can add a little bit of liquid smoke. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit. Gives it a nice little smoky flavor. And then from here, seriously, like maybe even a little, what do we got? Okay, okay. So we have some hickory smoked balsamic. I absolutely 100% swear by balsamic reduction. So it's the thick kind. Oh my gosh, you guys, like, I love this stuff. It's, I don't know if you can see it's Z olive. It's located here in Pigeon Forge. This is the hickory smoked. Um, yeah, so they have their own little shop here in Pigeon Forge. And let me tell you, I love that place. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of this. Nothing too crazy. So do you see how much flavor is already happening? I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder. This is generic onion powder. Um, I try to get organic when I can, but listen, I'm not an organic snob. I just don't have time to be, honestly, and there are perks to organic, and then there's also a lot of, like, misconceptions, so um, when it comes to seasonings and certain things, I'm just kind of, this is garlic salt. Um, I do use a little salt. I do not overdo salt, um, but I do, um, I do use salt. Yeah. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick it up a notch. I love, I love spice. I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm basically throwing anything and everything in my spice cabinet in here. So it's got to taste good, right? And I'm just sauteing it. I'm going to let it uh, saute and continue to cook or let it saute for just a few minutes till it gets good and soft and then I'm gonna heat up this red little chili that I made. We're gonna have a little protein talk. I always get, look at the light, it's so weird. Okay, I always get asked about protein and it's just like such a over asked question, a misunderstood question. So protein, all initial protein is made by plants, okay? So cows and goats and chickens and lambs and people, we don't make our own protein, therefore we have to source it externally. Um, so we all get protein, not from cows and chickens, um, but we all initially get it from plants. Um, so when we eat meat, um, not only are we getting the cholesterol and the problematic animal protein and um, you know, the saturated fat and all that, um, but we're actually getting a secondary source of protein. One cup of lentils has 17 grams of protein. And a lot of people will argue that it's an incomplete protein, yada, yada, yada. There's no such thing. There's literal protein and you have to have the essential amino acids in the protein for the body to use it. And so lentils are literally 
just as adequate a source of protein as any other source of protein, except you're taking, you're adding all the fiber, you're adding all the nutrients and the iron content and the calcium and whatever else beans contain, um, and you're not getting the saturated fat and the cholesterol, problematic animal protein. So anyway, in this, everybody's gonna be like, where's your protein? Um, again, so much protein and beans and lentils. I'll probably eat more than a cup of this. It's almost done. I never like to overcook my veggies. Um, in the longest living populations, they obviously eat uh, plant-centered, um, but plants are so much more than just like fiber and water content. They're full of phytochemicals, um, things like sulforaphane. Um, uh, you have super cancer-fighting, um, Phytochemicals in these groups of foods in the allium family and the garlic, onion, and leek family were said to literally obliterate cancer cells, um, live cancer cells, um, in a, a research experiment that they did. And they found that right behind the allium family um, was the, in the cruciferous family, um, totally destroyed cancer cells in the lab. Um, and then berries right behind that. Plants are our medicine. And it goes so, uh, so far beyond that. Um, you know, your cruciferous family, um, your Brussels sprouts, your kale, cabbage, um, broccoli, they really seem to target bad estrogens out of the body. Um, so basically when the metabolism slows down from sluggish digestion over the years, um, we accumulate these bad estrogens that just kind of stay, you know, running or streaming in the blood. Um, and so there are powerful phytochemicals in the cruciferous family specifically that target these bad estrogens and get them out of the body. Um, and of course you're, they're higher. It's the only fruits and vegetables, um, as well as spices, um, contain so many antioxidants. Um, it's actually, um, void in animal products, but your antioxidants help rebuild your tissues. They send free radicals out of the body um, with a double bond that basically allows that free radical to attach to it um, that otherwise wouldn't. So there's a lot of, um, it's complicated and yet it's simple. Just eat your veggies. Do you seriously see how much volume that I'm about to just totally destroy? for a fraction of the calories. So these veggies, um, they're about um, 100 calories per pound. There's so many veggies here. There's not only veggies in the little saute, but there's veggies in the, the lentil chili. Um, and then your starchy um, veggies, they're about 300 calories per pound. I definitely don't have a pound, I would say. Mm, I don't know. So, in the lentil, um, we, it makes it a little more calorically dense because protein naturally has more calories. But this is a lot of food and you can eat a lot more um, and fill your stomach up and fill you up for a lot longer than say if you just ate one hamburger. That one hamburger is gonna equate to just as many calories, if not even more, if you add on your fries and your Coke and what have you. So, excuse me while I eat all this, but seriously, these veggies are so good. Like, you can make vegetables taste good. Mmm. Mmm. I couldn't decide whether I wanted a spoon or a fork. So I'll start it with a spoon. So if you want more updates on healing and success, and how diet can totally revolutionize your world, um, definitely click the notification bell and engage with me in the comments. Um, I love to um, learn new things and answer questions and so on and so forth. But that's all for now, guys. Peace out.